Okay, 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 okay. For a lack of, like, true content stuff to talk about, we have some stuff to talk about. Right? We have stuff to talk about. We should get excited about it. Yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a, it's, I mean... A lot of big one-time things going on. There's stuff's going on. It never ends. We're terrible at this. Uh, God. Oh, wow, that's a throwback. Sorry. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Battle Science podcast for July. It's still July, right? Yes. July, the week of July 11th, 2022, or the week of July 15th. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's the Friday when it releases for most people. The week of July 15th, smack dab in the middle, 2022. I am one of your hosts, Stephen, a.k.a. A Boy in the Woods, joined, as always, by Jesse, a.k.a. Rocket Evan J. Oh, hi there. Uh, Go Fest is next weekend. Not this weekend, but the weekend after, yeah. as of this recording. Yes. This weekend is Starly Community Day. Yeah. That's a thing. So Go Fest and then other events and then stuff. Question marks? Literal question marks are going to happen next? Oof, hold on. Ooh, my earbud still in my ear getting kind of uncomfortable in there Whew. um yeah literal question marks we have no we have dates but we don't know what it is so we're gonna put some tinfoil hats on and speculate because i mean i do enjoy speculating maybe too much i speculate a lot um but you know who also likes to speculate i don't know our awesome patreon supporters oh my god what a no Oh, I can't handle it. Bobby. Bobby, no. The propane accessories, they got me. They got me Cohen. I don't know what I'm doing with that. It's like a Hank Hill mixed with Elvis weird segue. Well, my reaction to your segue. But yeah, uh, Patreon podcast producers. Uh, for the month of July, Dolphin93, James, a.k.a. Jimmy Bo, a.k.a. Jim is him, Evo Stevo, Winston the Champ. Uh, Jamar and hey, I know who Dan P is. It's Sarov. I think. Hold on, let me double check pronunciation. <laughs> uh, yep, Sorov. Dan P, aka Sorov. Uh, thank you for being wonderful Patreon podcast producers. To the six of you, if you want to be like the wonderful Battle Science Patreon podcast producers, triple P's, pieces cubed. Uh, you can go over to patreon.com slash battle science and back us at the $5 tier or more. Get your name read on the show and get the wonderful bonus that is available to everyone that backs us at a dollar or more, which is early access to podcasts and the um, Battle Science After Dark podcast, a Patreon exclusive podcast. We talk about whatever, whatever in the heck we want. Um, this next battle science after dark podcast we're going to talk about stuff and things and things and stuff um very classic yep uh that's going to be next week so that you will have uh, a little bit extra content to listen to on your commute to go fest if you're coming out to seattle so um we're working on getting some topics put together um so we can get you a nice little chunky uh chunky stuff to listen to um, either on your way to GoFest or maybe while you're at GoFest if you like to listen to something while you're playing Pokemon Go. Um, though my recommendation would be to hang out with people. There's going to be a lot of people. Some people maybe you haven't met before. Uh, well, definitely people you haven't met before. There's going to be a lot of people there. Um, new friends to make, I would say. So um, Listen to the podcast before and after, not during. Um, say hi to people. Ask them what their favorite Pokemon is, you know? 
Or ask them what got them into Pokemon Go. Yeah. I mean, asking what your favorite Pokemon is is a shorter story than what got them into Pokemon Go. <laughs> so. Well, you see, I was I'm, born on this date. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop you right there. <laughs> I'm going to stop you right there. Red and blue, 1998. Okay. Game Boy Color. Yeah, I mean, but you understood the assignment. Not everyone does. I'm looking for a short answer, not an essay. This is not an essay question. If you want to go back so to So what you're saying school. is you don't want to get schooled. Walks away from my... I need you to... S- no. I, I, I want to be able to enjoy Pokemon Go and maybe talk to people, but I don't need, like, a life story or a novel. Your dumb grin needs to come off. I've got a working pressure washer. You want to you want to try it out? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> I dare you to redeem hydrate one more time. <laughs> what happens when you redeem <laughs> hydrate eight <laughs> times in a row? <laughs> Steven uses hydro cannon. <laughs> Would it be hydro pump at that point? Uh, what is by technical definition the difference between pump and cannon? Pump is consistent. Cannon is burst. Yeah, that would make sense. That would make sense. Jesse with the logic. Blah. I guess so. <laughs> Why are you doing Inception music? <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Uh, if you want to <laughs> hang out with us, you can join our Discord. Link's in the description down below. Uh, what is uh, Oh. Oh, interesting. Okay. He got blocked by a lot. His own account got went and blocked a bunch of people. Oh, interesting. Proto Man's no longer hacked. If you got blocked by him or if you blocked him, he would like to be your friend again. Oh, uh, that's why. Okay. Go away, notification bar. Um, you don't belong here. No, I just don't like seeing an excessive amount of notifications. Um, join our Discord. You can follow us at battle underscore science on Twitter for update weird things, comments, and a ton of Jesse's um, AR photos. Goodness. Brain farted. That might happen a lot today. It's been a long day. A lot of moving things. It's been a long couple of days. Really hot couple of days. Um air conditioning an entire warehouse is nigh impossible so you know it's working in the heat moving thousand pound pieces of equipment oh just don't be like the one person that i knew but i back when i worked at another job who thought it'd be a good idea to put a cigarette lighter underneath a smoke alarm and have it turn on because they were too hot wow that sounds like a really dumb idea uh for one it was a clothing warehouse Yay. And two, they obviously hadn't cleaned the pipes in a while for the water because it came all out as rust. Ew. Wow. Way to go. Yeah, that was a fun cleanup. Gross. Ruined product and ruined days. Plural. Maybe weeks. Goodness. Uh, Where else? What else? Space the YouTubes. Books. Yeah. yeah YouTube.com slash you slash battle science. Uh, we'll take you to our channel. Uh, there you can find the video format of the Battle Science Podcasts and uh, a couple of tournament streams from our past. Uh, hopefully we can Maybe add to those. Maybe in the future, some live screen recordings from GoFest. Maybe. I don't know. I am i have i haven't said it to you yet, but I bought oh. a, a selfie stick. Oh, no. Are you going to use another phone to live stream? No, I'm going to use mine. Oh, while you're, you can't catch Pokemon while your phone's six feet away from you. We're not going to be playing on Saturday. Oh, yeah, I guess that's and true. And everyone else is. Yeah, I guess that's true. And it's got a button that I can push to change between recording and taking a picture. Oh, interesting. Wow, look at look at look at Jesse becoming an influencer, a content creator. Sorry, I say that because those words are kind of gross in my mouth. So. <laughs> well, you should get used to them. Why? Because that's what we're gonna do. Yeah. Eh, no one. Nah. Nah. Steven, we could do the TikToks. You know, you would sound really ridiculous if you said we're gonna we're gonna trend on Vine. 
long dead platform. Vine. We're going to use the Yahoo account. Oh, we're going to... Aim is going to be lit up. <laughs> What's your preferred... Hit me up on Aim. You got mail. <laughs> hey, you use that cool program, Skype? You Skype? Oh, oh my God, Skype. Thank God it's dead. Thank God. Thank Arceus, it's gone. Discord is the child of Skype. <laughs> yeah, Skype was terrible. We use that for so many D and D sessions. Skype? Yes. I mean, yeah. Um, move it on though. Yeah, I guess so. Um, email any other platforms? Yeah, BattleScience dot podcast at gmail dot com. That is BattleScience dot podcast at gmail dot com. If you want to send us an email, actually, speaking of, we did get an email. Uh, let me pull it up in my other window here. Uh, are we going to use MySpace? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to be in my top five? Oh, my. Are you going to be my fave five so we can text message without with, with zero fees? It's an old Verizon thing. Um, Just make sure your volume's turned down when you load our page. Going to be playing some of that Hooba Stank. Mm. Jeez, <laughs> you know, I actually really enjoyed the Hoobastank back in the day. They're pretty solid. They were one of the first bands that I had a CD of. Mine was Green Day. That's a solid one, too. You know, as a 10 year old, I was listening to um, the live Bullet in a, Bi- Bullet in a Bible uh, album. It's way too young. Way too young to be listening to that. Um, they were swearing up and down. Um, My first. CD that I ever bought though, mm-hmm. of course, part of the course to be a master from the Pokemon Company. Oh, uh, one of my first was All American Rejects Move Along mm. because they that the, the title single from that album was used as a uh promo song for the Bionicle series. Mm. Yep, I also Throwback. bought one way too many uh soundtracks between Halo and uh. What was the other one? The Zeldas? I still have all of my Halo soundtracks. They are beat up. They're beat well up. used. Yeah, I'm, yeah. They were thrown in CD players and then tossed around, so they are scratched. Thank goodness for streaming. Uh, I don't have to worry about quality for that. Uh, you know, play quality. What's the email? What? Oh, it was uh, from a listener. I will get into it later. Okay. Yep. Um, because we're still in the intro and we've got a bunch of topics and other stuff to to talk about. So, um, but do, 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 do you want to add the Discord and let people know we're live if they want to hang out in the chat? Yeah, I would just say, hey, we're putting tinfoil hats on and hanging out. So, okay, um, we're not going too crazy. Uh, All right, cool. Uh, righty, where am I? Should we? Yeah, let's do it. Giddy up now. This is the news roundup. I gotta hit a button. Come back in. There we go. All right, we're gonna hop into it. Uh, the last weekend? Actually, hold up. You know, I think I've. Yeah, I'm totally missing something. Oh, my goodness. Look at me being all behind and stuff. Just not prepared. I'm prepared for, like, literally everything else, but not for this. So give me one second. Uh, We're going to go here. We're going to do... Oh. We're going to do the thing. Seriously? Oh. Oh, that's... Well, yeah. Uh, yep, 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 yeah, yep, 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 we're gonna go here, we're gonna check here, we're gonna go all the way down to the can we, no, no, that's not what I want, is that you? Yep. What were you doing? How's it going, Jim is him? Oh, hey, what up? Uh, we posted that on July 6th. So as of last week, this time last week, we are battle sciences, battle science as a org org is three years old. Oh, 
Happy anniversary or birthday or I don't know whatever you would want to call it. I don't know which one's more appropriate here. Um, now we started with uh, Washington. What was it? Washington State Pokemon Go PvP. Correct. Oh goodness, what a name on Twitch. Oops. Before that, but Battle Science as the podcast and streaming sort of in title. The podcast started about three years ago, um, and then the name started about three years ago too. So. Um, battle science as, as in name and podcast is three years old. Yay. It's too old. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of strange that it's still going. Um, I don't, I mean, we're in a routine at this point. Why stop? But, right. You know, until you all decide that we're boring enough that you don't want to listen, we'll be yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's kind of approaching. <laughs> I hate to say, if we look at the, if we look at the Podbean numbers, it's uh, it's it's approaching. We gotta ramp it up, buddy. Eh. We gotta do more. I mean, uh, what else are we supposed to? I don't know. That's a whole other question that I'm trying to wrangle with. So, um, you gotta put um, your head out in the crowd. Don't be the ostrich and put your head in the sand. What the I'm going to need you to shut up. <laughs> Seriously. That's something that I'm working on. I know. So, yeah, don't. Everybody, let's cheer now's, up, Steven. Now's not the time to talk about that. Obviously. Um, yeah, I am not in the mood. Um, where in the ham? Okay. Uh, yes. So, speaking of anniversaries, the Pokemon Go 6th anniversary, um, that event has ended. But as a little recap and a couple of update things happened, so we are going to talk about that. Um, I think maybe the biggest thing is we're going to put our tinfoil hats on a little earlier than I anticipated. Um, we've got a Pokemon Go 6th anniversary little piece of key art here. Um, every anniversary they put out a piece of key art and usually has little tidbits of things to come. Correct. Um, I'd actually be curious, do you know how difficult it would be to pull up the fifth anniversary key art I, for me? In a minute. Okay. Um, not a huge rush, but it would be cool to see if there's anything. Why don't we talk anything. about this one and I'll grab it while I'm doing that. Yes, because I want to see if there's things from that key art that, that, happened. Have it, that haven't happened. Okay. I want to see if anything hasn't happened. Um, QR code to a, yeah, actually, that's really intelligent. I should have done that. Um, I can probably get those printed, like, next day from uh, Staples or something. So, yes, I should do uh, hand out business cards at GoFest. Though, technically, it's against the terms okay. of service for yeah, GoFest. Yeah, there is. What? Stuff that hasn't happened. Really? Oh. I, unless this isn't official. Let me, let me. Uh, just, can you Discord send it to me? Yeah. Um, okay, so things that we have here in the 6th anniversary key art that haven't happened um, or, or aren't in the game yet. Uh, biggest thing here, um, I think leading up to Solgaleo and Lunala, which are the box legendaries from Sun and Moon, um, the Alola region, is Cosmog is down here in the bottom left. Um, Cosmog is the base evolution, so it's Cosmog... No one remembers the second form. Okay. <laughs> That's a long name for a Pokemon, but, you know, uh, I'm sure they went with it. Um, so Cosmog, it's evolution, and then it branches off between... Lunala and Solgaleo. Exactly. Um, which means it's a box... Leg it's, is that the first box legendary that's an evolution? Yes. Okay. Because uh, Gen 1 had... Kanto starters. had the starters, which aren't box... Le they're not legendaries, but they're the box gen 2 had a uh -huh. ho -Oh and lugia yep gen 3 had groudon and rayquaza or it's... groudon and kyogre i'm sorry yes i don't know why i always think hoen is gen 4 <laughs> i don't really know why gen 4 had palkia and cosmoem cosmoem okay we're gonna forget that but thank you for saying what the second <laughs> tier of evolution of cosmog is cosmog cosmoem cosmeowem meow cosmeowem that's that's my head cannon name. I'm sorry. Um, and then Solgaleo and Lunala. Let's see what else is here that we don't have in the game yet. We have the top left, 
the bug marquee bug Pokemon from Alola, I think. So I'm gonna need you for the fifth anniversary. Uh-huh. There's two different images, and I don't remember which one's legitimately from the company and which is something somebody made. Send them to me, and I should be able to verify. I, if you Google search it, it's just a lot faster. Okay. It's Pokemon Go fifth anniversary is what I typed in. It's the first it should be the first two images. Uh I don't remember which one of those is the real one. I the VGC twenty four seven is not the one that they shared. It's not? Um no, actually I don't that's the fourth anniversary image as well. Uh Huh. Because if it's you're looking at the fourth anniversary image, the only thing that's not in the game that was in the image there at the time was Mega Mewtwo Y. Or sorry, Mega Mewtwo X. Fifth anniversary. Pokemon Go Wiki. Let's see if they've got the banner here. Um, okay. Let's keep looking here. Ads go away. Ah, um oh it's going to the event for fascinating pokemon go live oh here we go but it's just the generic picture of charmander or charmian oh, that's why i didn't use it you goobers uh artwork so it was that one i don't think so Oh, maybe it is. Yeah, no, you're right. That is. Okay. All right, so let's let's go. Let's finish going through here and then we'll go back to the 5th anniversary. So, 6th anniversary art. Um, do you know what the name is of this bug in the top left? Pavilion. Pavilion. Um, so that's the bug. The butterfly that has like 20 different variants. They're all different colors. Yeah. No attributes are changed whatsoever. Okay, is that it's, just It's a variant. It's kind of like Furfro. Where based on the region, it has a different variation. Mm, as far as colors. Yeah. Um, and with that one having 20 different regions, that could be get, get pretty crazy. Yeah, I have no idea how they would handle that other than form change. Regional, a form, random form change, maybe. Event based, because they've done that with Furfro. But the problem is, how often are we going to get alternate forms of Furfro? How consistently are they going to allow us to form change Furfro into different stuff? I don't. It's kind of wild. Um, let's see here. Is that dusk form lichen rock? Do we have that? We do not have that in the game yet. Okay, so we have what night and day form? Midnight and uh, regular. I forget what the regular term is called. Okay, but we don't have dusk form, and this is dusk form. I believe so. It is the orange. I like the orange. Um, someone in chat will correct me. I'm not as big a nerd about rock. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Even though I went and did way too many raids for it. Charger Bug. Charger Bug is here. Charger Bug, uh, Vicavolt. Or no. It's, the base form is Grubbin. Yep. Then Charger Bug, and uh -huh. then Vicavolt. Yep. And this is, I believe that's... It's, uh... Charger uh, Bug. That's Charger Bug, yeah. Uh-huh. And it becomes, uh, Bug Electric. Yes. It's a pretty sick, it looks like a bug railgun yeah pretty tight um so we'll we should i mean theoretically we'll see that soon and that's a lola yes um let's see we've got the megas of the canto starters we've got another variant of a villain um a lolan vulpix or the vulpix is hanging out with uh blanche Ah, oh, you got some other stuff in the background. A ton of gyms and stops in the background. You got some player characters. You got a toga kiss. You got Shaman Skyform. Skyform, which will probably be the one we get for. Uh, that's the GoFest one, right? Yes, that's guaranteed GoFest. And then if you didn't do GoFest, it's the global reward, I think. It is the. End of season Go Fest celebration event at the end of August. Yeah, yes, it's guaranteed there. I think we'll get can additional candy. I don't think yeah. we get a second encounter, no, but we yeah. get additional candy. Um, like every other time. Yes. 
Um, okay, now that's about Pokemon. You didn't mention Turtonator. Oh my gosh, it's right in front of me. Turtonator, uh, Dragonfire from Alola. That one's... I don't know how soon we get it. I honestly don't know if we get it this season. Be sick. It would be sick. It's pretty tight. Uh, it neutrals its ice type weakness. The fire type neutrals the ice type. Uh, the dragon's ice type weakness. Um, does it then neutral to fairy? Yep. Okay, because fire resists fairy. Fairy. Yep. So it's then predominantly. Is it a water weakness now? Nope. Water still neutral. neutral. Okay. It's primarily weak to dragon. Yes. Dragon, ground, rock. What's kind of wild. We'll really, really have to wait and see what kind of moves it gets. Because if it gets something like Incinerate Dragon Claw, then... That'll be great. That would be wild. That would be really great. Um, I feel like, if anything, though, they're going to give it either... It does get Dragon Breath. Uh It does get Dragon Tail. Dragon Tail is one of its signature moves. Mm. Um... It does get flamethrower. That's another one of its staple moves. Uh-huh. It's more of a special type. It's a spe- high special attack, high defensive stats Pokemon. Mm-hmm. It's meant to be like a ranged attack wall. Okay. But has the added ability of uh, abilities in the main series like Shell Trap, where the first time it hits with a physical attack, mm-hmm. the uh, attacker gets hit for a certain percentile, I think, of damage. Mm, okay. Um, let's see here. Um, I think that's all of the Pokemon. We got the two forms of Shaman. Are those the Mega Stones floating up around the Pokemon? Uh, at the top of the screen? No, those are balloons. Okay. Yeah, those are just balloons. Another thing to point out is, uh, the... If you say the NPCs, I was just about to get to those. Go for it. Um, so Rhi is here being a maze on the bottom left. Um, like the absolute uh, universe traveling goober re is. Um, <laughs> oh, did you mention Mimikyu? No, Mimikyu's here. Hi, Mimikyu. <laughs> ghost Adorable. Fairy. Incredibly versatile. Is it Ghost Fairy? It is Ghost Fairy. Oh, I didn't think it was Ghost Fairy. Um, I thought it was a straight ghost. No. Uh, yeah, it's cool. It. Shadow Claw play rough is going to be gross. If it gets those. True. We don't know. Which kind of stinks. Um, yeah, we've got uh, new NPCs that are like more detailed than the player characters that we see here. So we see the default male and female trainers from Go. Um, and then... Do we have... Let's see. We have in the blue and the red outfits. We don't have one in yellow. Um, the Mega Latios, Mega Latios are here, but those aren't new. We are, we've already had them. There's also um, Jellyfish, the Ultra Beast, and the... Nihiligo. Also, yep. we already have it. I'm pointing out the new things that okay. we don't have. Um, We've got Willow. We've got the two player characters. We have the three leaders. We have Re hiding in the corner. And then we have two? Two new NPCs. So one of which talking with Spark in this purple... Like jumpsuit? Jumpsuit kimono-esque. Because it's got a like fold in the front. Like a um, layer kind of thing. Um, and then this really interesting, like, long jacket with a red sleeve. It's pretty dope. Um, and a Pikachu bandana. I, I think. Actually, I think that's Vivillion. Uh, it's the same color as the one on the right there. Yep, you're right. You're right. That's probably... It might tie to an event. You might have been right. That's, honestly, that might be a bug-type trainer. That's works very well um oh wait hold on i am now diving deeper into this so pavilion that might be some sort of like form change potentially i'd have to look at the different colors uh combos of pavilion because the 
You've got the red and blue on the sleeve. You've got yellow. You've got the purple primary outfit. And then you've got the yellow yellow and brown pavilion uh, headband with the hint of red um, there on, on this particular character. The other character you have hiding behind, not, well, not necessarily hiding, but the other character that's hanging out by Turtonator kind looks of like looks a like a traditional hiker. Kind of looks like a traditional hiker, but has a very interesting headband around the hat, which looks like a ruler. Which makes me wonder if this person isn't going to be like a clothing store operator. I don't know. Or is going to care about the size of Pokemon. Because that is a thing that you can do. As you can see, the the if it's an extra small, regular size, or an extra large size of a particular Pokemon. So, um, I can't tell anything else about most of the outfit. And the rest of the character design is behind Turtonator, so I can't quite tell. Um, but seeing two new, very meticulously designed NPCs is pretty interesting. Um, so we'll have to wait and see if we get these NPCs here in the next year. Um, if maybe they show up at the end of GoFest uh, or what the uh, deal is. Do me a favor. Maybe. On the top left of Toga tickets, there look like there's a silhouette of something. Uh Looks like Mew. Where? Between the squid and, and Togekiss. It's just water coming out of Blastoise. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. There's. I don't think there's anything hiding there. Um, One thing I would point out that other point people have pointed out, mm-hmm. you do have Rowlet, you do have Cyndaquil, and you do have Oshawott. That's right. The starters for Hisuian. Uh, Legends, Legends Arceus. Arceus. Yep. Yes, so that is also a little bit of an Easter egg nugget thing. Tinfoil um, hat putting on time. Yep, that we might be getting the Hisuian uh, forms of the evolutions uh, or of those starters at some point here in the next... Uh, event or two. The next event or two at the soonest or in the next year plus at the latest. Yeah, and I think those who haven't played Legends Arceus, um, in the beginning of the game... The professor of that region has actually been traveling around the world. They bring back three different starters that they found along their journey. And you come to find out that because they evolve in your travels in Hisui, they adapt new forms. The Rowlet in in, uh, Alola would evolve to become a grass and ghost type. But while in Hisui, it evolves to become a grass and fighting. Samurai, regularly a water, becomes a darkened water, and then uh, Cyndaquil evolves into a ghost and fire type tyf- Typhlosion. And each of them, if you haven't played the games, have a really cool lore as to why they changed into these, but I don't want to spoil too much. So, other than the typings, the designs, some of them are better than the others. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but. Legends Arceus is an interesting game. If you have nothing to do until Scarlet and Violet comes out, definitely worth a pickup if you've played main series games before. If you've never played a Pokemon game before on a console like Switch, it's also just a fun pickup for a first-time playthrough. And it's the story takes place pre-Gen 4. So roughly, they don't really say this is Sinnoh to prior to what it used to be, but... It's a fun game regardless. It's It plays with elements from uh, Gen 8 with the wild area, except for the one variant in this is the Pokemon can attack you as a player on the map, and you have to craft to make your items. At certain points of the game, you unlock things to just straight out buy the items, but the crafting element makes it a lot more interesting and fun to play. I'm going to look back at the... Oh, goodness, that's tiny. Uh, we're going to zoom in. Uh, this is the... Oof, that's a terrible bit rate, too. Um, this is the 2021, uh, the fifth anniversary key art for Pokemon Go. Now, let's see. The primary thing that I think we don't have here 
is Mega Mewtwo. And that's Mega Mewtwo Y? X. X. Um, so I think, let's see. Because Lucario's here, Gumi's here, a bunch of Pikachu around a Sawsbuck. Uh, like a whole lot of Pikachu around a Sawsbuck. The uh, Formies of the Genies. Yep. Uh, Meloetta is here. Um, there's a laying down Snorlax in the back corner. Yep. That's a pretty neat little uh, little Easter egg. Arc nine. That was it. the uh, attempt at Pokemon Sleep, I think, right? Mm. No, that was a couple years earlier. Yes. There's a rocket balloon hanging out in the top. Uh, <laughs> I love the Greninja and Infernape being Chad's. Um, doing that like anime protagonist standing up at a high elevation, letting the wind catch their hair and tongue. Uh, Greninja, you're you're weird, you weird edge lord. Um, and then a big old pair of boots, which I think are in game items. I'd have to double check. Um, yeah, I don't see anything here that is standing out as far as things we don't have, other than Mega Mewtwo. Which might be coming soon. Maybe. we. I honestly have no idea. Um, they are taking their time with the mega rollouts, and I honestly don't see that big of a problem with it. So, uh, Was Sylveon new to that year? No. Last year? This last year? No, yeah. I don't think so. Okay. No, I think it was already out at that point. Okay. Um. Hey, Chronic. Uh, so far, so good. We are. We have our tinfoil hats on. We are speculating. Hard ish. I don't know. Eh. No. Hard's a weird. That's a weird way to describe how <laughs> we're speculating. Um. Yeah. So potentially within the next twelve months, new NPCs with stuff. Um, more Alolan Pokemon, because that's primarily what's here. Um, and then a little Easter egg as far as the Hisuian starters, so. They did add Hisui to the Pokemon search, which makes sense because the... Electrode and Voltorb? Electrode and Voltorb are already here. We'll get the Hisuian starters maybe at some point. My biggest question there is do they become, because they're a split evolution... Do they become like the uh, not Galarian forms, the Alolan forms of some of the Kanto Pokemon, where they are a limited evolution? Which I hope not, because that's kind of dumb. Which ones, other than Execute and Cubone? Exactly evolve? those. Uh, Pikachu, which we haven't seen yet. True. Um, I would have expected to see that in the season of Alola, but we haven't seen it yet. Yeah, we got the tree in Marowak. Yep. And I think that's the... Is that the only two? The other two, yeah. Because then there's Pikachu and I... Because Grimer, Sandshrew, Vulpix, uh-huh. and... Um, Diglett all have... Have a different variant base various form. various base forms, yeah. So Pikachu is the only one that evolves into an Alolan well, and variant. Raichu. Yeah. As a, uh, yeah. And in the games, that was because of the region. If you wanted a right. Kanto, you had to transfer from Let's Go... Or from an older gen. And I imagine, or I imagine there was a trainer somewhere that would trade one to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so we will, to my knowledge, Gal- Galard. Is there a Galar form that has a different base form? A base Galar that's different? Or a base like Kanto, Johto, Hoenn that and has there's a. there's Zigzagoon. No, because that's. A Are you talking about form. something that's like Pikachu and Execute? Yeah. Um, Corsola. No, that has a different type. Corsola. When has it a, evolves, it's not a straight water. It's water rock when it's in its base form. Uh huh. When it evolves, it becomes a ghost rock. I thought it had an alternate base form. For Galar, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it does. Galar. Corsola. Yep, it has a different form. Okay. Oh no, you're right. Yeah. Yep. And then it evolves into Cursola. Yep. Uh, yep, it's a straight ghost. Okay. Uh, what else am I... Just look up Galar variants. Uh, 
I don't remember because we just played so quickly through Galar. Yes. Uh, That's a low one. Regional form, Bulbapedia. List of Galar forms, so Meowth. That one forms. had its own base form, though. Farfetch'd had different base forms. Yep. Wheezing. Wheezing had... Coughing was the one, yeah, that it, when it yeah, evolved. Wheezing and co- or, yeah, coughing and wheezing. Um... That's uh, it. The, the birds. <laughs> right, but those are just standard one that tier. That might be the next event. The birds. Because they're in the data mine. Yeah. There's so many things that are in the data mine, because isn't, <laughs> isn't Kecleon in the data mine? It's been in there for a long time. Yeah, I, I, I'm I not saying. I, I Yeah. The, the, we are getting so much more Alola stuff than we are getting Galar stuff. I don't imagine we get the Galarian form of the legendary birds here in the next event. Yeah. It just seems improbable to me. I mean, it's possible. Did you subvert my expectations, Niantic? Go for it. Um, but I I don't think it happens here. I don't quite think it happens. Um, do, 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 do. So the only two Pokemon we have in the game that evolve into different variants that we haven't gotten limited releases for are... Actually, it's technically five. The Hisuian forms. Yep. His or Hisuian starters. Yep. Because those are are those data mined in the game yet? Yes. Okay. Hisuian starters. The Pikachu and Alolan Raichu, which again will probably have like a week long event to do. Thank goodness we don't have Shadow Pikachu to make people go. I honestly don't bonkers. think they ever will. Shadow Pikachu? No, yeah, probably not. Just like Shadow Eevee, probably never going to happen. That would be such a nightmare. It would be insane. Normal doesn't mean we could be the one everybody wants then. Ye- or you make it exclusive to... Leader. Leader, yep. Hey, chance of shiny, though. Um, <laughs> Collectors are pulling their hair out right now. Why Niantic? Speculative. They sp- would potentially be pulling their hair out. Um, let's see. So Pikachu... And coughing, evolving into Galarian wheezing, and then the three Hisuian forms, where we don't have the regional evolutions, or we just get more Ultra Beasts. What do you mean? We could. All, at this point, it's all. Just I mean, speculative. It's, yeah, uh, no, I'm just talking about the form change. Things that have a different form for its evolution. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, as far as what can happen next is, is for events, we'll get there in a moment. But yes, who absolutely... Uh, not Niantic is the only ones that knows. Or content creators that are told ahead of Embargo. Embargoes, contracts, we don't have any of those. We get to go wild. Hog wild. Um, yes, things, stuff. Lechonk wild. Things. Chonk wild? Lechonk. Lechonk wild, that is... Lechonk is adorable, it seems great. Um, that is the key art for the sixth anniversary no Mewtwo on this yet, which is kind of interesting. They've removed Mega Mewtwo from from this, from the art. Um, from the previous year's art. So, interesting. All righty. Let's talk about the sixth anniversary event and what it added to the game that will be here moving forward. Primarily Shadows. Yep. Because that is the most, I think, important thing that we got out of the anniversary event um, is a couple of new shadow Pokemon. Um, Primarily, I'm just going to hit the top level brand newest shadow Pokemon and we'll kind of give you a thumbs up, thumbs down on overall performance uh, and if it's worth going out and farming for them. Um, So in normal, we have Pat Rat. That's a thumbs down for me. That's a two thumbs down for me. Uh, I mean, I got a good one just randomly, but even then... Watch Hog is, doesn't perform standardly. It doesn't perform as a shadow. Uh, Duskull in Ghosts. Uh, shadow Dusclops gives it a little bit more... It becomes like Celio and Lapras, where it trades its bulk out for some extra damage. Mm-hmm. The biggest problem for Dusclops in like Great League is Hex is slow, 
and that trade-off for a little bit more damage might be beneficial. It makes so Dusclops normally runs Hex. You can run it, run it Sucker Punch, mm -hmm. not recommended. Um, and then it has Fire and Ice Punch or Shadow Punch. It makes the punches hurt a little bit more, but other than that, it's kind of the benefit of running. It is one that does have to be above level 40. It's kind of like the cast forms in the mm -hmm. sense where it's got to be a little bit up above 40. Uh -huh. I enjoy running Dusclops myself personally. I don't think I'll invest in a shadow one, though, because mm. I've already built a regular one. The addition to flying is Ducklet. Uh, Little Cup monster. Yep. So if and when Little Cup comes back, actually, I think it's back right now. It's it's the next one after next this week? cup. Okay, so it's next week. Um, Little Cup will be back if you have a sub-500 CP uh, shadow dus um, Ducklet. Higher overall performance. Um, yeah, because I, I think it was Proto Man was saying, what is it, wing attack or bubble? Compared, uh, put together with bubble beam is just disgusting. Mm -hmm. So you just get more damage. Yeah. Um, Swana, not great. Pelipper's no. your better fl uh, flying water. So no, no issues there. Uh, nothing, well, kind of, sort of, something new in rock. Uh, rock and ground both get the addition of either Geodude or Graveler, depending on which type you're in. Cantonian. Uh, yes, Cantonian. Uh, doesn't help it. No, it's not fantastic. So, um, oh, we got a question here. Uh, it's Jamal Colorado in the Twitch chat is asking, hey, Jesse, what's your cutoff for powering up a shadow? Top 250, double digits, single digits. I imagine this is his rank. Oh. Yeah, if I'm going to power up a shadow, it's got to be below rank 100. Unless it's something that I can get. Like with the previous event we just had, I think what what was that best Charmander that we both found? The Shadow Charmander. I think we both found one under 120. Oh, as far as Shadow, I yeah. don't think I found any of the one. starters that I found that were under. Uh, because we were able to get their community Davies moves right there and then, I think my leeway was a little bit higher. I think my best was like a 200. Here, actually, I can just check. But I, I want to say outside of the event, normally, if I'm going to keep a shadow, it has to be below rank 200. Mm. I'm very specific when I come to my shadows because you got to remember it's twice the cost to power those up. No, nope, it's not twice. Is it one and a half? Uh, I think it's 1.25. But even then, if you're going to build something for Great League like Dust Clops that it does adds. require to be up to level 40. It adds up. It adds up real quick. Yeah, especially if you're anything that has to be maxed, like especially like hundos. Save life. Anything for, ma anything for Master League, you want to make sure you've got good ones. All right, so. We've got the right ones that are going to last. I got you. the rank 133 Shadow Charizard at 19.5 with both Dragon Claw and, or Dragon Breath and Blast Burn. Uh -huh. So that'll probably be one I most likely invest in. Um, what was the other really decent one I found? Uh, let's see here. I want to say it was the Zubat. A rank 57 Crobat Shadow for Great League, which really doesn't work well because it's Crobat. Mm -hmm. But there are a couple exceptions. Um, your legendaries, your Shadow Legendaries, you only really get one of those, so you can't really, you know, be picky on that. Yep. But for me, like my Shadow Apex Lugia, I was dumb and did it weather boosted. So it's too high for Great League, but it's a rank 1287 for Ultra. The benefit for Shadow Legendaries is they're going to be a lower level, so it won't require as much power ups. Mm -hmm. But I would say in general, I try to keep it below rank 200 if I can, unless there's super exceeding circumstances like I can get special moves out of an event. Or if it's a one-time event only thing, because again, you can't trade shadows. Mm -hmm. You can't re-roll those. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, nothing new in Bug. Nothing new in Psychic. Uh, Bug got Beedrill as a second, but they haven't said it's able to be caught. Exactly. Uh, nothing new in Normal. Electric did get Shinx. Yep. Which, it's really glassy already. Um, so if you want, realistically, I think a ultra or, oh, um, an ultra or maxed out shadow might be a play there. Um, just for more damage as a super glassy cannon. But overall, I don't think it's, I don't think it's ideal. No, it it's definitely, it performs better, uh, than the regular one. Mm. Just because Psychic Fangs hurt so much more. And if and when it becomes a, a leader's Pokemon, that Shadow Shiny is going to look awesome. Like, holy cow, it's going to look great. Shinx Community was this year, wasn't it? Yep. So if you got one with Frustration removed, then you have a good one for Community Day rerun yep. this, this December. Yep. Hopefully we get one more Rocket event before then because if we're stacking up... If you didn't get one prior, then you get one between here and then. That would be a good investment. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Um, there will definitely be a Frustration TM uh, off event between now and December. You would hope so. Sh- I mean, there definitely should be. Um, potentially leading up into... I'm no, sorry, I take Steven. that back. What? Did you get a hundo? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Just do a... Um, it's um, oh god, Chronic. I'm sorry, I forgot his name. It's it. It's not Vasilevsky. Was it Vasilevsky? Uh, we go here. We go to sports. Um, it's a free evolve too. <laughs> I need you to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't checked yours, so you might have gotten one too. Um, I, no, Nikita Kucherov. If you guys want to see a really funny sports clip, it's Nikita Kucherov's. 2021 Stanley Cup press conference thing where he is definitely drunk, he is definitely shirtless, and he swears. But his... uh, I I don't know if he's Russian, but he's definitely Slavic. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It's it's great. It's a great little clip if you don't... uh, If you want to see something funny. Um... Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, seriously, I need you to. Um, I need you to stop. I need to stop giving you hundos. I need you to stop. Was that? <laughs> I your... don't get to choose these things. Is that your main? Yeah. I'm raising. Uh, the bird is flying the coop this weekend, and it's starting early. <laughs> blah 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 blah. Try harder, Stephen. <sighs> Hold on. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, there's birds. <laughs> Why? What? Where do these birds come from? Why are they in my room? Why are they here? There's so many birds. There's two more birds than should be in this room. Would you like me to give you three more? H. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to know. HR is like, what are you doing? What are you doing? You crazy guy. Uh, wherever there's light, there's also shadow. So dark gets purloin. Um, so we joked about up. this one. We looked it up, and charm shadow purloin actually straight out beats Machamp before it even gets to its charge move. That's awesome. Um, Lipard is its evolution. Um, That's also, what I meant, yeah. the namesake of the Snarm and Charl, because it has both Snarl and Charm. And if you butcher that, it is Snarm and Charl. Um, so, I really should do that as stickers. Snarm on our, and Charl. On our merch store, yeah. Dark hearts and then pink snarls. Uh, I think I broke Steven. I need you to run upstairs okay. into my room. Okay. My bag is there. Pull out the black notebook. Okay. Because I need to draw this right now. Actually, my pen should be on my bed, too. So go grab that. I'll be back. Uh, you have struck inspiration, and I need to write it down before it whoop, leaves my brain. 
Um, yes. So Lightbird is bad, but Shadow Lightbird is less bad, slightly. It does more damage. So the Charm Lightbird might have some play. It is straight dark. Um, doesn't it have absolutely bonkers charge moves? Let me look. Wait, I have it right in front of me in my game. Lightbird. I only have several really good ones. Uh, Dark Pulse, Gunk Shot. Don't use Gunk Shot. Uh, that might seriously be it. Um, let's see. Items that we're going to use. Okay. Um, so it has Gunk Shot, it has Dark Pulse, it has Payback, and it has Play Rough. It's a dark type with really good fairy moves. The best fairy moves that are in the game. For PvP, that is. Because uh, Moonshot takes a ton of energy requirement. Um, yes. Uh, if you want a really spicy dark type, a.k.a. Pseudo Fairy, uh, Lightbird is there. Uh, and so is Shadow Lightbird. Um, it's really it's, it's quite glassy um but boy is it bizarre um so if you want something that's uber fast spam well it's not quite uber fast spam but um snarl into uh dark pulse and play rough and then um if you want just straight damage charm and whatever it's not gonna get to doesn't matter what you give it as far as charge moves. It's probably not going to get to it. So, honestly, this is one of those, like, this is one of those, like, hidden gems here in this release of, of Shadow Pokemon, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, Lightbird is a... Shadow Lightbird is a, is a play here. Um... Ew, gross. Ooh, ah. Don't do that, Jesse. Uh, nothing new in fighting. Nothing new in fire. Sad. Sad Vulpix noises. Uh, poison. Is it also in grass? It is not in grass. Poison. We get Fungus, which is a poison grass. Uh, fungus and Amoongus. It, eh, they're, they're not great. Nope. Don't worry about it. Get them maybe for Dex Register or Collection or whatever. Um, Need Arena. Uh, Nido Queen's uh, evolution is still the in slot two. So it's, it's a chance on the chance. It's a chance of a chance to get Nido Arena. So if you don't have a Shadow Nido Queen, um, you're still kind of. Hoping. It's the new Sableye. <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, as we said before, Geodude is available in the ground type as the first uh, eligible Pokemon. I would say don't over if you get a balloon or if you see a rocket and you need components. Still do the Geodude because there's a good chance it gets rollout. They they might do a classic or something and give Cantoni and Geodude rollout because it's. Will it make it better? Probably not. It still prefers its legacy mud shot. I think it was what it was. But. Um. Yeah, it's kind of a. Eh. Eh. Yeah, it's not great, but it's, if anything, it's still Judo Candy. Yeah. Um, and then I think, I don't think this is new, per se. Alolan Executor for Dragons. It's been in there since they had it available for uh, the Evolution. Yes. It just wasn't turned on for the first little while. Yeah, I, well, I would have to wait and see. It was back when they gave Arlo Execute. The grunts, there was a, an event based around it that the grass type grunts also had the shadow execute, execute. And then they were supposed to give the female dragon trainer the chance to have Executor. Something didn't work. And then they went back and retroactively fixed it. And so now it's in this event. It's now. And that's one of the things we kind of talked about when we were out doing the Rockets the other day was other than them putting a little executor now is another dragon. Dratini has been the only dragon since when the Rockets first came out. Yep. And we mentioned, you know, Sierra had Bagon 
right? Or no, it was Arlo. Arlo had Bagon. It would be nice to see Bagon come as maybe a potential instead of the tree because no one wants a lone executor. Yeah. And PvP wise, it's bad. It doesn't max out very high for PvE, to my knowledge. Mm-mm. It's also super weak to ice, so it's kind of a poor. Um, the interesting thing with Bagon is that it uh, Salamence Megas. So if you're if you looking do for, get a good one and you happen to get a purified Hundo, yeah, and you want to purify Hundo for the Mega, it's an option. Um, the because the shadow can't megas. Shadows cannot mega evolve, so that's always something to keep in mind. Um, and if there's something we get a... Certainly we get an event, maybe a dragon event or something in the future, where Salamence comes back uh, and Mega Salamence shows up. Um, that's an opportunity for the dragon-type rocket leader to, to rotate too, so... Um, yep, some interesting additions to Rockets, some changes. Oh, uh, before I get too far into my outro, um, Decoy Grunt is the same. It's still Bellsprout, so if you're looking for a Shadow Victory Bell, do that. Grind the Decoy Grunt if you have the Super Rocket Radar. Giovanni now has Latios as its third, and theoretically will have it until the next Rocket event. Correct. Um, that's not going anywhere. It's. I think they said it until the end of August, right? Uh, you will be able to complete that research until the end of August. But there's a good chance that might be the change. But I won't hold my breath. We we had Latia. Uh, we had Latias all the way up until this event, which is midway through. Latias became Giovanni's Pokemon midway through the season of Alola. About and now we're midway. Later, si- through now we're midway through this season. The season of Go. So then potentially halfway through the next season. Yeah. Whenever the next rocket takeover event happens where um, things so rotate. So that's a good chance that happens in what, October? Potentially. I mean, I won't put a month out there specifically, but there's a chance it won't rotate until October, partway th- November. Partway through next season. So. Um, but the primary change here is with the anniversary event. We had the Rocket Leaders uh, now have the uh, the Kanto starters, which is something I've been asking for for a while now uh, because their Shinies are available as Shadows. Um, so Sierra has Squirtle as the instinct parody. Uh, Arlo, correctly, as the Valor parody. Um, for Rocket, has Charmander. And Cliff uh, gets Bulbasaur. Strangely enough, but there isn't a grass team, so you know, deal with it. Wonder um, here's some maybe some deep lore. That's the starters they chose. That would be fascinating, though. I don't know. That would be kind of. We don't get a whole lot of lore as far as Rocket and the leaders and stuff. The the they do mention that the shadows are created through mistreatment and scientific experimentation. It would take some pretty twisted people to have their first starter Pokemon and turn them into shadows. Hi, I'm Giovanni, and I can make your Pokemon stronger. I know, but they're still base forms. They aren't Wartortle. They're not going to give us the evolutions. Uh, well, that's fine. I mean, th- they do have the option of getting, um, having the third evolution of their starter on their team, so then maybe that is their starter. Maybe they're already leveled up. Uh, evolved so maybe i think that's why they went with those is because they had those already Mm. um but i don't think cliff had venusaur what do you mean prior to this event i think uh Uh, arlo has had charizard and sierra had had blast no she had lapras i would have to do some hard digging, digging to yeah. see what they've had previously as far as just their back line their f- their starting pokemon that's available to catch um i'm sure is easier to find what they've had in the back is probably a nightmare no yeah. um the benefit was during this weekend event you could catch them and immediately remove frustration and then evolve them to have their community respective community moves mm-hmm. in the case of charizard you got both dragon breath and blast burn yep isn't necessary you want blast blast burn it depends on what build you're going for if you want uh dragon breath or not dragon breath or fire spin 
or potentially wing attack, which yeah. is still around, but legacy you would need an elite TM for. Yeah. Um. So it's unless they do another event where it gets that. Hey, and then you don't know what fast move you'll get when you evolve it. Unless it's pre-registered to have that. Maybe it'd be absolutely wild because it would have two legacy fast moves, yep. which I don't think would be the first time, but it would still be bizarre. Um. I think um, everyone wants Charmander here. Yes. Overall PvP performance and PvE performance as well, uh, Charizard is the the leader here. Not necessarily head and shoulders, but definitely a head above. Um, Venusaur as a shadow is solid. Best grass um, type attacker. Definitely not overall. No, it is. Shadow Venusaur maxed out is the most offensive grass type. Until Mega Sceptile comes out. Okay. Um, even Mega Venusaur gets outpaced by Shadow Venusaur? N- uh, that's a good question. Okay. Um, because it does have access to Razor Leaf. Um, a discount version is Shadow Victory Bell, which is has been more available, I would say. Mm. Um, so there's some options there. Um And Shadow Blastoise doesn't really help it no. much. I mean, it's there, I guess, but, you know, you're you're not winning more. Um, holy cow, we have gone an hour on just this one topic. Goodness. Uh, yes, Arlo, realistically, is, uh, unless you're looking for the shinies of each, um, I actually was super lucky. The first one I did over the weekend was uh, Sierra and got a shiny Squirtle immediately. So that got TM. Frustration got TM'd away. It's absolutely terrible IVs, but it is sub Great League if I wanted to use it anyway. Um, actually, let me check if we go here and we go Blastoise, Shiny Shadow. I want to see what abominable CP does it come out for Great League. Because it's probably terrible. 1483. 1483. Or 1516. <sighs> That's bad. Um, could be worse. Yeah. I, I'd go get their shinies. I would I would grab a Great League one for each. Just to have. Yep. Um, and then the next event. TM Frustration off. And then wait for the Community Day reruns. Or wait for, for Community Day uh, moves to become available again. Because it's not like they're going to go away forever. They certainly aren't. So, uh, Right. July content update. Hey, this weekend is a Community Day. It's Starly. It's uh, okay. I think we, talk, <laughs> we talked about it last, uh, last episode. I'm not going to tread the same water. Just because that water is very shallow. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> That's a good analogy. It's okay. Shiny's cool. I think there's more dust and stuff, so do the thing. Um, the Sounders lose in a full 90 minutes to Nashville. Um, post our CONCACAF. Wow, goodness gracious. Um, Chronic, I am so very close to doing a Steven Sports Spot, but there is we have spent way too long on everything else, so it's going to have to wait. Um, maybe the B sad next week. Um, let's see. Pokemon Go anniversary event has already happened. Hey, by the way, the whole question mark thing for an event. Yeah, that's happening. Uh, Wednesday, July 27th to Tuesday, August 2nd. So that is the week after Seattle Go Fest and the, a full week. It, this, uh, the question mark event ends a full week before, the uh japan go fest because that is happening in august as well uh the question mark question mark question mark event a special event featuring pokemon debuts uh and new adventures question mark you bet exclamation point get ready to for a to be revealed event that will take place from wednesday july 27th to august august tuesday august 2nd um so the one thing that we can kind of infer because it's an event that is happening directly after a go fest if we complete the ultra unlock 
the weekend, that weekend, so the 30th and 31st, we'll have some sort of ultra unlock happening. Um, so that is um, going to happen. My phone is ringing. I have to ignore it. Um, the one thing we do know is that Dialga will be in raids for actually not the entirety of the event. Dialga will be in raids up until Sunday, July 31st. Um, so there will be two days, two-ish days of that event where we will not have Dialga. We don't know what we will have after that. Um, the same thing with Mega Gengar. Mega Gengar will show up for Mega Raids up until the 31st. The last two days will have something different. Very interesting. Um, is that... That is the day before that event starts. The event starts on the 27th. Metatite, two times XP for evolving Pokemon. The July 26th is happens before, so we can't really infer much there. Um, the couple of things... Um, Um, the couple things we can infer or, uh, one other piece of information we can infer from um, is the loading screen for this season yep. the season of Go um, because we have seen in order of appearance on the loading screen from left to right um, Tyrantrum we've had the fossil event Sawsbuck this is the summer form Sawsbuck um, because we're uh, in the northern hemisphere, it is summer currently, um, so we have the summer form deerling um, spawning in the wild, and summer form Sawsbuck is available for evolution. Um, up in the top, still going from left to right, is a in the background a star raptor, which was honestly very early on. I saw it and I was like, "We're getting Starly Community Day." We're getting it because it's a three tier with a shiny that isn't uh, hasn't been available yet. Um, so Starly Community Day very early on. I was like, it's it's happening. Um, below that we have a crustal carrying shaman. Now Jesse and I were talking about it earlier before the show. I don't think crustal's been featured in anything just yet. I don't I feel like we had something with Dwebble, but I don't remember what it I was. I don't think it was around. Somebody in chat, help us out. It has Crustal been part of this event, this uh, season yet? Because I don't think it has, unless it's been a, a featured Pokemon in another Go Fest or something. Then that might explain it. Um, behind Crustal, or technically in front of Crustal, we have uh, Snorlax, which is showing up. During the is it all of the Go Fests or is it, it just didn't show up? In, it showed up in the first uh, virtual one uh -huh. in raids, mm -hmm. and then when Berlin came out, they announced that it was going to be as a cowboy hat mm -hmm. for Berlin. I mm -hmm. don't think they've confirmed that for Seattle, but I feel like it'd be kind of dumb if they didn't. Or it gets a different outfit. I don't know, but it is a sp featured spawn for the Mindscape. Uh, biome okay and i imagine it would be the same for japan and then maybe something again at the end of the year or the season the go fast wrap up event mm -hmm. um underneath snorlax uh ditto event oh oh was crustal uh dwebble part of the ditto event i think so okay that would explain which it. would have been part of the tcg Kind of. E yes. Give me one second. I'm going to pull that up here. Uh, Pokemon Go live. Um, we have Tepig underneath Snorlax. I, I, Tepig and Chikorita are both here. I'd like to think that's part of the sixth, uh, sixth year anniversary event. Um, where all of the starters were featured, it might not be. Um, those are such bizarre, two different generations, two different types. 
as far as starters, um, that they might be part of something else entirely. Give me one second. I think I'm seeing, am I seeing something? Am I losing my marbles here? And no matter how much I zoom in, it won't get any bigger. There you is can hold an, control plus. Oh, no, no, it's part of. Tepig's tail. Yeah. yeah. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Uh, reset. There we go. Um, yeah, it's part of Tepic's tail. Um, I'm seeing like a, a perfect circle here in the bottom corner. Uh, we're gonna go news. We're gonna go. Where's our ditto? TCG crossover event. Um. Uh, I don't see it there as part of the TCG event. Ditto was not. It, it's the Ditto event. The Ditto event was before Season of Go, wasn't it? I don't remember, to be honest. I don't think it's... Ugh, way to go, guys. PokemonGoLive.com Seasons Go doesn't have any updates from <sighs> what the communities are or anything like that, so... Mm. Uh, thanks guys um, yeah I don't know I don't see a news post or blog post on um, what's it called uh, PokemonGoLive.com so let me do it uh, Pokemon Go Ditto Event and I'll check there um Um, the one other Pokemon that is here that is not shown up as part of an event is Beautifly. That is Gen Three, the evolution of Wurmple. Yep. So we have Wurmple's shiny, but it is a three tier. It is a bug. Um, that turns into a what? Bug poison and bug flying. It starts as a bug poison, then turns into bug flying. Is Dustox also bug flying? No, it's bug poison. Okay. Um, it does have a split evolution. So it's essentially it, if Caterpie could evolve to do different things. Yeah. Um, there is a small chance that that becomes August Community Day. No! It, shut your mouth! I mean... No! It's either featured as part of an event... Or it becomes community. It becomes the community day. Do you know how much people would be upset? Niantic if, doesn't care. I know, but it's not the time to make people mad. It's never the time to make people mad. It's I know, always but the time at least, to make people mad. At le- there's a put a buffer. Make between, it September between Starly and yes. Um, this is featured for this season. This season's loading screen, though. That doesn't mean anything. We're just speculating. And I'm speculating that it's going to happen. I don't. It's either going to be featured or it's going to be a community day. I, I really hope featured. Take take that. Take it to the. It's it's one way or another. It's going to be showing off as part of the season. Um, take that to the bank. Oh. Um. Uh, let's see. Do those disguises? Yes, that's true. Dwebble is now a disguise for Ditto. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think we all need a Shundo Dust Ox. Um, if is it a green shiny? Is Dust Ox green? Because if it's green, I'm staying here in town. Because I like to get my apparently, apparently my uh, Shundos can only be green and can only be caught in the Snoqualmie Valley. So. Um, I don't make the rules. That's what. That's what the RNG gods have told me. So. Uh, I guess you can consider it green. It turns its wings more brown. Like a a, a moss green. So, maybe. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, we could see a bug event. The last time we've had a bug, a- 
we had a bug out event within the last 12 months, haven't we? Mm-hmm. So, because the only thing is if Crustal here is not showing that it's part of uh, the, the Ditto update, um, it could be part of a bug event with Beautifly. Uh, but that, that that doesn't also explain Chikorita and uh, Tepig, so maybe I don't know. We still have basically we're halfway through the season right now, midway through July. The season of Go is June, July, August, so we kind of just have to wait and see. Um, we have no idea what August's events are. Actually, we do have an idea of what August events are. Uh, so the other interesting little tidbit is that during the question mark, question mark, question mark event, it's also question mark, question mark, question mark as far as GBL um, format. We'll have Master League and we'll have question mark, question mark, question mark. So no idea what we're going to get here. We could get something absolutely bonkers. We could get something absolutely boring. Um, maybe another word that starts would be. Try and think of what else starts with B other than bonkers and boring. As far as what a negative way? Just in general. A descriptive. Beautiful. Fascinating. I think you're on to something. Uh my tinfoil hat is covering my eyes. I can't see. Um <laughs> Um the one thing we do know about August's events is we're getting the fighting cup which means we're probably getting a fighting event. Fingers crossed because that also would tie in with the Bay outfit, um, the fighting type gym leader from Galar as the GBL rank 20 plus reward. Um, that's also happening right now. So for this season, uh, Halucha's been in the Game Master for a while, so we might see Halucha. It's a Alolan Pokemon. No, it's a Gen 5. So then we are well overdue. Or sorry, I'm X and Y. Gen X and six. Y. So, yes, um, we are somewhat overdue for getting Halucha. Um, Flying Press has been in the game for a while now with uh, the Luchador Pikachu or Lucha Chu. Because, yes, Lucha, yeah, whatever. Um, you understand what I'm talking about. So, honestly, there's probably more speculation as far as what the Fighting Cup might have than what this question mark, question mark, question mark event is. The one interesting thing is Dialga's around, so one of the speculations is it's a Hisui event because Dialga is the time Pokemon. Um, it might be the case... Um, which means we could see some Hisui forms or Hisuian forms and the Hisuian form evolutions. The odd thing about that is we have two of the three of the Hisuian starters shiny or Hisuian regents uh, starter shiny. So we have um, Oshawott and we have uh, Cyndaquil. Cyndaquil. I was thinking it started with a CH, so I was absolutely blowing it um so we have those two as far as shiny starters um rowlet is not shiny yet correct um i don't think that's necessarily a i mean they could do a denier huh they could pull a snivy and release it shiny with that event that is true it it the, there is no precedence like no precedence forget to drink water kids i think my voice might be leaving me um um yes so whatever the event is that will have an ultra unlock that will be over the weekend that realistically could be hey your base starters can now evolve into their hisuian forms and it's only for those two days maybe um which would be a very bizarre inclusion into this season, but yeah. we are working this season story-wise through wormholes being everywhere and Professor Willow being gone. So it is just uh, just re as our 
um, sort of mentor here. Uh, each quest is field notes where Ri is learning more about our universe and Pokemon. So, um, interesting, nice little plot twist. Um, ooh, ooh, I think your tinfoil hat's on perfectly there, Wait Toast. Uh, Wait Toasty, uh, um, in the Twitch chat saying Chespin CD to coincide with Fighting Cup. Uh, let me check to see what the dates are for community days. Let's see. We're going to just been for August. Wouldn't be terrible. Right. Um, let's see. Seasons. Season of go. Uh, go fast. Re community day. August 13th. Go battle. That would be right before. So the fighting cup starts on August 17th. So there is a chance. I've noticed that the community days aren't always coinciding with the events that are going on. Sometimes it's an absolutely, absolutely disconnected um, when it comes to events. what the community, what the community day is for a weekend and what the event is going on. Yeah. So um, there is a chance that it is, you know, it might coincide. Um, that would give chestnut frenzy plant frenzy plant when it runs energy ball is, it doesn't have counter no so it like smackdown or vine whip smackdown or vine whip and then close combat in frenzy plant which doesn't it's, help it is it close combat or is it superpower uh it's one of the two i haven't used it because it's kind of underwhelming from <laughs> my point of view um it's a pseudo fighter, realistically. Like it's a fighting type, but it's a really a pseudo fighter. It's a better Breloom. <sighs> Is it though? Yeah. Um. Maybe, maybe if the 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 event planners at Niantic have lined things up well, then we might see a Chespin uh, community day in August. I don't. I don't. I don't think so. Community chestnut or chestnut gets counter and frenzy plant becomes the new most broken I mean, Pokemon. <laughs> it could, but then fire types get bonkers. Um, Hisui and Typhlosion gets would be its bonkers. Bane. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Typhlosion gets uh, what is it? Uh, Will o' Wisp. <laughs> yeah, please. Um, I mean. So if we want to really put on our tinfoil hats, like absolutely ridiculously, what types are Tepig's evolutions? Fire fighting. Fighting. What type is Chikorita? Grass. Grass and fighting is Chestnut. Chespin confirmed community day for August. You're going. I'm grasping at the the most microscopic straw microscopic up, straws it. that exist. I have grasped at them, and I theoretically have them in my hand. They're so small I can't feel them. But they're there. They're definitely there. These straws are here in my hand. Um, I have them. Um, it's like Steven goes to get a straw in the cup holder and just grabs the whole cup. <laughs> it's science. Science. Um, I, like Steven as, just doesn't take a bowl. He takes the bowl. <laughs> the... If I, if I had to go by the loading screen, I would say it's Wurmple Community Day. Everyone's going to hate it. That's fine. Niantic has definitely shown that it really doesn't care that much. Um, people might still play it. It'll be like a triple dust or a bonus Stop. for XP. For, like additional bonus XP for evolving because it evolves into two different forms. Oh, by the and way, that form random. isn't random, so you guys can go get uh, go have fun with that one. Um, Evolve it once and then trade it. Yeah. Yeah. Reroll those stats. Um, but it's not going to happen, so don't worry about it. Unless they find a way to, um, unless they put in a, uh, an implementation into the game At where it de randomizes point, if they it. They won't. They might. They could have easily done day night. Maybe they've been waiting for the right time. <laughs> and now is the right time. I won't hold my breath. Um, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see a fighting. We'll see definitely a fighting type event because the fighting cup is approaching, um, and they've shown that 
the they gave the legacy move back to uh, Primeape. Yes. So th- there's definitely like a fighting thing Chance. happening. There's a fighting thing happening this event uh, season because uh, Machamp is back or Machamp has shown up again. Um, if Chespin shows up, then sure or Chestnut, I should say. Um, there's definitely arrows pointing to it. Um, yeah, I, I, who knows? They could completely and totally catch us off guard on Monday or Tuesday. And we'll definitely talk about it if it's unveiled, if, uh, August community days is talked about, uh, on Monday or Tuesday, we will definitely use the battle science after dark podcast to talk about our feelings. Um, Jesse will probably get absolutely hammered and rant very hard and maybe say, things he will regret later or i will have to bleep if we get a warm bowl community day yeah because i'm the one that's had to be edited twice now no if you say like things that absolutely can't be said even on a b-sad i might have to censor that when have i done that you haven't done it on a podcast yet correct yeah doesn't mean you can't start it took me a while to swear for the first time on the podcast. It seemed to come pretty natural. I mean, you know me. I swear outside of the podcast all the time. <laughs> <laughs> if you poison yourself because you hate Niantic so much, Wurmple will evolve into Cascoon. If you... <laughs> Jeez. You know Pokemon Sleep? Yeah, that's not happening. Um, the new uh, crossover game between... Um, the Pokemon company and your mobile phone is Pokemon Breathalyzer. Actually, or if you, it's called... Uh, it's was... called Pokemon Breathalyzer. If you breathe into the thing, it will detect if you've had too much alcohol and will give you poison types. I forgot You're being what toxic. It, it's, the pet, it's the Tamagotchi app they were coming out with. Tamagotchi app? Yeah, the new app that Tama, the Niantic's coming out with. Oh, uh, Starts they're doing, the P, I think I have no idea, but they're doing one with, uh, the NBA as well, which is yep, wild. that's true. Niantic's, Niantic's going wild as far as the games they're developing. Yeah. Those projects that, you know, might not never happen or just you know, will ar- arrive, be around for maybe a year or two and then leave. It's bothering me now that I don't remember what it's called. Uh, it's kind of irrelevant. So no one's going to play. I mean, some people are going to play it, and then it's going to get shut off because it doesn't do it doesn't do Pokemon Go numbers. HR, I know you're there, and I know what time it is, but I'm going to need you to hold on for like I don't know, maybe 30 minutes more. Okay, can you do that? Period. Dot. I know you can. Uh, okay, nice. Kind of like the gem, but not like the gem. <laughs> uh, it's Pokemon, but we don't want you to focus on hundreds. We want you to just focus on one thing. It's literally Tamagotchi app. Okay, cool. Um, AR Tamagotchi. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Japan, Community Day, or Go Fest, August 5th through 7th. Do the thing. Um, prepare yourselves because Go Seattle Go Fest is happening if you're coming out to Seattle. Uh, um, either party. as a local or as... Um, either as a local or as a traveler. traveler. Um, come hang out. Um, we will basically have nothing to do. Are we doing stuff Friday or so? are we just hanging out? Well, I can get off at two thirty on Friday. Okay, I'm off at three. <laughs> um, are you checking chat? Okay. Um, no, he's he's hungry. HR is hungry. Um, that's why he's he's all up in my business. Um, I'm making me I'm making him wait. Um, not out of spite, but as out, out of I'm in the middle of something. Um, Orna, no. Um, I will have to write that down and check that out later. Um, I've never heard of it. Orna. Oh, fascinating. Orna RPG turn-based GPS game. I will definitely have to look that up later. Um, 
If you're coming out to GoFest, we will be around Friday evening. We'll be hanging out in our hotel room, so we are not going far. Um, so we'll be around. Saturday, Meet we'll be around. Dicks. We could. Isn't there... So what's going... Is there bar hopping Friday night? There's the DJ set. Is that, isn't that Thursday? No. That's Friday? Yeah. Okay. That's right. We technically RSVP'd. So we might show up. I don't know. I'd like to go. Yeah, I, I don't... We know where it is. Yeah, we don't have solid plans. Um, Saturday night would have been a tournament, but that's not happening. It sounds like I think that's when the bar hopping is happening. Okay, so we might do bar hopping. We might do some sort of meetup. Don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many listeners would be interested in doing a meetup, community meetup, uh, at some point on Saturday. I don't know how many people are going to be playing. I think our plans on Saturday are just to kind of hang out with people in the Seattle during, Center. Yeah, during the day, definitely hanging out with people. I don't think they'll let us in. They will. Oh, really? They can't stop people from going in the Seattle Center. You just don't get anything for go. Oh, interesting. Oh, so they're not gating it off and checking. Oh, cool. They can't. Um, it's a public space. Mm. Everything that I've been told from other people... Mm-hmm. That have had events like this go on, saying that they're not going to be able to gate off such a iconic area for a weekend. That's true. The Space Noodle is right there. So, yeah, we might just be walking around. Yeah, because they said you can come into the park, mm-hmm. but if it's anything like Chicago, you just don't see anything in the game. There are no spawns. Will there be the stops? Will be there or no? No. Oh, interesting. So we can't even. It, it decentivizes riders. people hanging out. Okay. Um,. Yeah, so we'll probably be hanging out with people Saturday th- over the course of the day. Saturday evening, we might do a meetup. We might be doing the bar hopping. I'm not super solid. I think playing it by ear is reasonable. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily want to be a groupie to the other big PvP or, or other big content creators per se. Um, I don't know. I. <sighs> I don't like putting people up on pedestals like that. So, like, I there's going to be other people that then are going to do that. Then go meet them at a person level. Uh, no, I mean, what am I going to go do? Say hi and have Hang a- out. Tell, chat. I don't know. Hi, I like Pokemon Go. So do you. And there's a bazillion other people that are wanting to take up their, their attention. Okay. Like, I don't know. I It's okay to say hi and introduce yourself and then stop it there. Okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm just really socially awkward. <laughs> you are very socially awkward. Um, like I can talk about my thoughts of like getting people's autographs at like conventions and stuff. Like I just don't understand it. That's why we're gonna get a Sharpie pen and they're gonna just sign your shirt. Why would you sign no, not my shirt? The lab coat. Don't sign the lab coat. Why? I will only have one of those with the badge if it comes okay. in on time. I'm I'm hoping so. I'm going to wear mine, uh-huh. and in my little pocket thing, uh-huh. it's going to be a Sharpie. Okay. If you see me at GoFest and uh-huh. you want to sign it, go for it. Oh, all right. Uh, Waitos will be hanging around. Spolock has a Saturday pass. Waitos will also be around on Friday. So, yeah, I don't know how many people would be interested in doing a meetup at some point. But And then our tickets are for Sunday. Yes. So we're playing Sunday. Oh, what? Keep going. Okay. Um, I'd like to still hang around Seattle Sunday, but the I mean, as some people probably have seen, uh, the region in which you can play the outside That's of exactly the community, what I was just about yeah, to send you. outside of the Seattle Center, um, the area in which you can play is pretty big. Like it's miles. Uh, I think Jesse sent me the. Jesse sent me the photo, I imagine. Yep, here we go. And this was put out by Ken Offendahl and the Ghost Stadium team. Uh After speaking with Niantic directly, they had said, when it comes to the city event, you can play anywhere between Everett North or South down to Tacoma. Which is huge. um, It is the entirety of almost three counties. You're talking... Yeah, you're talking... 30 minutes freeway drive north and maybe an hour drive south. 
And then unfortunately, <laughs> literally the other side of the hill from where we live is the cutoff in Issaquah. Yeah. yeah. So we can't come home. We can we can go to Issaquah. <laughs> we can go to Issaquah, we can or, go Bellevue. To Issaquah or Bellevue, but we can't go come back to the Snoqualmie Valley, but, which I think is fine. My my the only downside with traveling outside of of downtown Seattle um, is you're losing out on the event experience by driving or being with the other people for, that are there for that weekend. Yeah, because there's a half hour. Yeah, is that right? In between, and there's an hour in between. Okay, there's an hour in between, which realistically does give you some time to get out, get in a car, somehow get of Seattle out of Seattle traffic, and then drive somewhere I mean, else. That's not hard. Hop on the bus. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't mind hopping on the bus or and, anything uh, else Spalik, like that. And it is Bellevue. It goes east to Bellevue, mm -hmm. north to Everett, and south almost down to Olympia from what it looks like. You get um, Bellevue, Redmond, Renton, Issaquah. Um, south you get, what, Maple Valley? Yeah. Wow, they even get Maple Valley. <laughs> yeah, they didn't give the Snoqualmie Valley. <laughs> that sucks, too, they because... One of the coolest things out here is the Snoqualmie Falls. Yep. <laughs> but it does help in the sense that you don't have to stay within. So the biggest question when they first announced this was not knowing where the borders were. Was it going to be Pike Place Market and the waterfront? Was it going to be South Lake Union? Was it going to be Capitol Hill? I think them expanding it to this range was a really smart idea because that way not everybody – has to stay in the area. Mm -hmm. And it also, with it, let's assume it's as hot as it has been the last couple of days. Some people that live in the area, if they want to go home, they can go home for a couple hours and cool down and recharge phones and stuff. Yeah. And it that is, also means for like us, we could go back to the hotel for a little bit and still be able to play the event. It is positively huge, though. Like, this zone is massive. I think yeah. bigger than any other. I would say that's the majority of Washington State. Uh, the greater Seattle area is what I would call it. Yeah. Um, it's definitely not the majority of Washington State. Washington State is huge. Yeah, but... Huge. Um, it looks like it stops before Port Angeles going east and goes right down along the, polin the peninsula, if I'm looking at it correctly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it crosses over. You could probably you Spot could probably like take true. the uh Lake Lawrence the Maple Valley. It's a great place to play. Um you can do some of Vashon. I don't know what the spawns are like, but you could realistically take the ferry. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's the intention is they want you to that's kind one of, of the things to explore while you're yeah. here. Um even just walking onto the ferry is a fun experience and just taking that boat ride. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I, it's a massive amount of space. And I think um, in, what I was trying to get to was I think the reason why they're doing this is because they want to have people disperse from the Seattle Center between the different events. Mm -hmm. um, On the graphic here, they have a couple of very popular Seattle local areas with South Lake Union, the Waterfront, Capitol Hill, University Village, and Green Lake. We have been to all of those. I haven't played personally in South okay, Lake. So like, um, uh, no, I don't think I've played in South Lake Union. Er, mm, so South Lake is south of Gasworks. Mm, then no, I don't think I've played there. Okay. Um, I also haven't played in the University of Washington's campus proper. We've played but in University. They said UW Village specifically. Yeah, that's gonna be dense yeah on a weekend that's going to be insane especially if the weather is nice yeah um we went there for the fossil ultra unlock yep and it was packed it was good yeah i mean it's very solid spawns absolutely but it's one of those things of like it's there's tons of people there already the so. one thing that i will say for anybody that is listening that is coming in out of seattle that's not familiar the streets are cramped parking is not good um, I would say Uber, public transportation is your friend here. It is uh, very much or, your friend. Or staying within walking or biking distance. Uh, uh, there's a couple people that have been putting out articles on where to go and what to do. When you're here, you can check those out. Um, a couple recommendations that I've given to people. If you're bringing kids or have young ones with you and you need something to distract them, the Seattle Aquarium, the Woodland Park Zoo... 
And uh, if you want to go out west or east a little bit, the downtown Bellevue Park or have all great assets for kids to entertain them. Mm-hmm. Um, if I had to put in priority order, I think the Woodland Park Zoo is probably one of the best ones. It's also right there next to Green Lake. So if you want to go to Green Lake afterwards, it's a really big, I want to say it's, what, a four-mile loop? Do Have you looked at the forecast recently as far as what that weekend's going to look like? It's going to be upper 70s. Upper 70s, okay. Honestly, I would laugh my my cheeks off all the way to the bank if we get stereotypical Seattle weather and it starts Overcast to rain. Overcast and rain. Overcast and rain. <laughs> Honestly, I kind of want that. Yeah, and I agree with White Toast. Green Lake is ideal, but it would be crazy. Yeah, yeah. If the weather's nice, you got uh, all it's the. A weekend. It's a very urban. Uh, what's the right word? A lot of people live there. Um, uh, urban. Yes. Yeah, it's a residential. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's a. It's uh, a very residential park. It's a big. Yeah, it's a big park surrounded by a lot of the uh, outer Seattle residential area. So, but if you don't want to go there again, Woodland Park Zoo is really fun for kids. If you have a PM ticket, I would suggest doing your AM city portion in uh, the zoo. It's shaded. It's covered. There's only really a couple of dead spots, but if you're moving, you'll be fine. Um, If you are someone a little bit older around our age, there are plenty of areas to go check out within Seattle proper. Pike Place is a great tourist trap if you want to go check out souvenirs and watch them catch the fish, the fishmonger that's there. Uh Uh-huh. Um, there's also the Ferris wheel, the gum wall. What? What's the zoo and aquarium that's down south? Point Defiance. Point Defiance. That is also available and might be a little less popular with people. So yeah, it won't be as crowded because you won't have the whole entirety of the Seattle community there. But yep. also that's south down in Tacoma, I think. So you'd have to transport down to there. Mm-hmm. Um. Everett, also a very popular location for ferry rides if you want to go up north. There's a couple malls. There's Redmond, the home of Microsoft and Nintendo, but you can't really go in there. <laughs> Just fun facts. Wait, which one? Microsoft and Nintendo. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're not open to the public. Yeah, their campuses are there, though, if you want to go see those. Mm-hmm. You'll get a picture with the Master Chief. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else we got? We have... Yes, I mean, there's a lot of guys out there. I, I can't just say personal favorites because I think of the four locations here on the graphic that they say where to play, I think UW is the easiest approachable one. Wouldn't you say so? Which one? The UW Village. Um, like as far as parking, as far as accessibility to get there. I imagine parking is going to be absolutely insane. Um, There at at university village um because it has some availability but it's not we've never had a problem finding parking Uh, whereas i can count the times that that we've gone to green lake or i've been to south lake true parking at green lake is just a nightmare anyway um south lake i couldn't tell you capitol hill is not gonna really not much better not much better i mean i honestly the lesser of your evils is green or is um you don't. You, you, yeah, University Village. Um, as far as if you're driving, yeah. If there's, if you're doing public transit, South Lake Union's great. Green Lake's not as bad. There's uh, waterfront a, is within walking distance. Waterfront is within walking distance of um, the Seattle Center. The Seattle Center. Um, I imagine Green Lake. I imagine there is a bus route directly to it. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Because it's primarily just straight. North, and if you so. want to experience the full Seattle experience, you can also take the monorail from the transit station there at the Space Needle down to, uh, I want to say it's Westlake Center. And it'll drop you off a couple blocks away from the waterfront if you want to do that. And you goes on a nice little monorail tri- monorail, monorail train ride through the majority of the city. And I think it was, what, $12 when we went? Which one? The monorail. I've never ridden it. Really? Yeah. I thought we took you. No. Oh. You keep thinking I went on these grand Pokemon Go adventures <laughs> that I never joined you on. We're going to have to make some. That's weird. Uh, but yeah, that's... So, for reference, again, what we've been talking about, and if you're watching here on the stream, this is for the city portion of your ticket. Yes. So, there is the... Um, 
The park version. Which isn't a park. It's just Seattle Center. So yeah, it's just called Seattle Center. It's not a they they are calling it Seattle Center Park. It's not Seattle Center Park. It's just Seattle Center. It's Seattle, Seattle Center. Um and I want to say that's what, roughly eight city blocks squared? Uh, it's probably a little bit bigger than that. I don't know exactly what their borders are, but okay. yeah. Um Within that area, there's a handful of there's realistically some of the architecture is pretty cool. You have uh, Glassworks Park, um, which is the that's most likely going to be where the Electric Garden is. Probably, I'm hearing static feedback, um, which wasn't happening before. Um, Glassworks Park, which has some Chihuly. If you don't know who Chihuly is, um, I think it's Dave. Dave Chihuly. I'm not if, sure. If you're into uh, art or uh, blown glass art, um, look him up. Um, fantastic um, looking stuff. Um, you have Space Needle. You have some of the um, concert and event venues. Have some really cool architecture there within Seattle Center. Um, EMP and Mopop. EMP and Mopop, which I think are still open to people going. Yep. So. Um, I don't know if that's within Seattle Center for the Seattle Center, your park portion, or if it's um, what it technically is. So, Pacific Science Center will be open. Pacific Science Center is also available. Um, Great place for kids, too, if you want to learn science-y stuff. You know who never got back to me about the gaming event, who they thought I was somebody else and then Pacific never got back science to me? Center? Pacific Science Center, yeah. Thanks, guys. Um, they're not listening. There um, is Climate Pledge Arena. Formerly the key arena, but that's not part of GoFest. Not part of GoFest. It's going to be closed off. I think there's an Machine event Machine Gun Kelly. Machine, Machine Gun Kelly happening on Friday? Friday, Saturday, and then the Seattle Storm playing Sunday night. Which is awesome. I need to go to a Storm game at some point. Um, the WNBA. Um, they did get confirmation that they will be taking that stadium, though. Oh, they are? Okay. Yes. That is cool. That is most likely where the battle event's going to be uh-huh. and the merch booths. Potentially the meetups. Okay. Um, if you are interested in hockey, the Seattle Kraken have a team store there within the Armory. There's also a couple of food venues. Imagine, uh, I imagine the lines for those are going to be insane. Yeah. So either bring food with you. Yes. Or expect to stand in a line or have the lunch Armory very, is the very, very mall early. equivalent to the cafeteria, basically. So there's a um, or food court. I don't actually know all of the places there. I know there's a mod pizza and then there's a chicken place, both of which are fairly solid. So there's also a subway. Yeah. Mid mid tier, mid tier food. Just kind of meh. There is a Starbucks. Yep. Yes, that's true. Um, yeah. Realistically, bring your own snacks. Bring your own there's food. There's a QFC within two blocks of the park. Yes, there is a QFC within two blocks of the park. Um, there's other options as far as... There's a as McDonald's a block away. Food, yeah. Um, there's I would the say Dick's two blocks away. There is, yeah, there is a Dick's drive-in, uh, burgers, fries, that's burgers, fries, milkshakes. Um, if you are from away, if, if you are not from Seattle, the one thing to note about Dick's um, that you might not know until you get there is they will not change the order of your burger. Um, the They make the burgers exactly how it shows on the menu. You cannot ask for no pickles. You cannot ask for no lettuce. It is how it shows on the menu. That is how they are able to serve you as quick as they are. Um, you can't ask for something different. Um, you can't secret menu it and like order two things and stack them and all of that crazy stuff. Um Actually, it's not necessarily a secret menu. You can go ham if you want, um, but you can't order, you know, a plain cheeseburger. Uh, so be it's prepared for that. Yeah. Um, if anything, other than just that, go it's a for great the burger. shakes and the fries. Yeah. Other than that, it's a great burger at a pretty reasonable cost too. So, yeah. um, and they treat their employees great. So if that's something that uh, you look out for, um, yeah, I would recommend Dick's. Um, other than that, I would say bring your own food and drink, uh, non-alcoholic. Don't party too hard. Um, it's going to be more, you're going to be more flexible that way rather than having to wait in line and wait for food prep and all that other stuff. So, 
Um, that would be some of my final uh, advice for GoFest. And if you are looking to get around other recommendations, like Stephen mentioned, Uber, getting an Orca card would be a good way. That's the public transit card. Um, yes, definitely. Um, even look at the... We do have the Lime scooters. Yes, which I think are operated through Uber, yep. Uber's app. Um, <laughs> I was uh, staying in Seattle for SakuraCon, and there was a cracking game one night. And so I walked down there... I walked the stadium. It was maybe 20, 30 blocks. It was like a mile plus walk. And all of my, I was messaging my roommates, hey, game's out. I'm walking back. And they're like, "We, you really should get a bike to be faster and not have to worry about people. And I was like, eh. I look at it. I pop the app open. The app is like, don't forget to wear a helmet. And I'm like, guess what they don't provide you with? A helmet. Guess what it is illegal to do while riding a bike? Not wear a helmet. I'm walking. <laughs> and I walked back. So... Um, sorry, Strin- stringent rule follower here. Um, I don't have access to a helmet. I will not ride the bike then. Uh, yep, things, stuff, stuff and things. We don't have any idea as far as outfits. Uh, shiny debuts are Combi and Panpour. Uh, imagine the next event after GoFest Seattle. If you are not able to attend, we'll have Panpour spawning all over the place because that's what we've gotten for Pan Seer. Um, the same thing with Pan Sage after the Japan Go Fest. We will probably get Pan Sage in the wild, unless they tell us no, uh, and completely and totally ruin it for us and be like, "Oh, we gave you Pan Sage. You have to wait for the other two for yeah. an undisclosed time." Yeah. yeah. Oh, we're the bird came back. Get that bird out of here. Sorry. Also, uh, <laughs> Darkrai and Cresselia raids. Yep. And we will need to do those just as we see them. Otherwise, we will lose the passes. What do you mean? We get a bunch of free passes. A bunch. Oh, okay. Use them or lose them? Yes. Okay. Uh, yep. Things. We've already talked about the bonuses as far as the bonuses What's and the spawning spawns. and all that, yeah. Yeah. Um, we don't really know... What the and more anticipates? What the and more are because the amount of spawns per quote-unquote sanction or per... Um, per biome is different um so we'll kind of have to wait to see what uh what are else is included what kind of costumes there are other stuff like that so yeah um i i I honestly am not super excited for combi because how mad you get the shiny but it's a male yeah i mean yeah it's gonna happen (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Unless they change the the default the spawn, yeah, spawn rates, and it becomes a fifty fifty. I've thing. already got the hundo mail. I better not get the shundo mail. <laughs> I laugh myself. I would laugh myself to the bank. All right, who wants to take that bet? Actually, no, I don't want to take that bet because it's no, gonna no, no, happen. No, 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 anyone else want to take that bet with me? Oh, go for it. Uh, bet some booster I'm gonna packs. Say, I'm gonna say he gets it. I'm gonna say he gets the shundo the I'll shundo run mail. From it. Does anyone want to bet against it? Because, I mean, there is a chance that he won't. So, uh, Twitch chat, let me know. Um, we'll figure something out. Um, okay, looking forward past GoFest. Start planning for the 2022 Pokemon World Championships. This is the Play Pokemon World Championships in which Pokemon Go will be featured. Uh, Four-day event hosts five individual competitions as well as pl- plenty of fun activities and s- or four spectators in London, England. UK, I think that's, yeah. Um, August 18th through 21st, that is the weekend after Japan Go Fest, the Sapporo Go Fest, um, to be more specific. Uh, at the XL London Event Center, uh, TCG, por- uh, so- Sword and Shield, Pokemon Go, Pokemon Tournament, and Pokemon Unite will all have competitions. Uh, the Pokemon Go World Championships will be held there. Um, put it on your calendar. The stream's probably going to be absolutely amazing. There's going to be a ton of battlers there. The one little bit of extra news we got recently is that the uh, first day, first day or the day before of the World Championships, uh, there will be a last chance qualifier for Pokemon Go and Pokemon Tournament 
uh, at the Pokemon World Championships in London next month to earn entry to the main championships. So if you haven't punched a ticket yet to Worlds, the Worlds Tournament, uh, and you're there in at the championship, there is a chance you can that you can compete, and there is a chance that if you um, place high enough, you will make it into the Worlds Championship Tournament. So um, if you can make it down to London and you haven't punched your ticket yet, that I think is the last, absolute last opportunity that you can to make it into Worlds. So um, no real other details on that from what we can find. Um, looks like it will be pretty sweet. Um, I will try my absolute diddly darndest to check in. Is that, that's not the weekend that you're going down to see your cousins, is it? Which one? Uh, August 18th through 21st. No, no. you're going down the 12th, 13th, 14th, which is Correct. the week of Sapporo's Go Fest. I'm sending you something on uh, okay. Discord. Um, Looks like you are a psychic. Hey! Okay. So, holy cow, 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. Um, okay, so just to finish up the World Championships, I will have that on my calendar. We're definitely going to watch it. They're going to announce the where they're hosting the world championships from for 2023 correct fingers crossed it's here in the u.s if it is and they give us dates i will put it on my calendar and i will do absolutely everything in my power to be able to go specifically as a spectator probably not as a competitor there's no way i'm gonna make that competition um but it would be a ton of fun to be able to go and hang out with people and and watch that watch that kind of tournament from uh, the event space itself. So we will have to wait and see. Um, yes. Uh, hold on. Is there anything else? What else am I missing? World championships. Uh, things and stuff. Okay. We are past the two hour mark. I don't know how much longer you want to go, but, uh, I'm just letting you know. I don't think we have too much more to talk about. No. Um, okay. Pokemon professor podcast network. Um, the top overhead organization that, um, puts on the lured up, uh, Pokemon go podcast. Um, it wouldn't be go fest if the lured up crew didn't bring the shenanigans. Join us on Saturday, uh, July 23rd from 9 PM to 2 AM for a Pogo pub crawl through the Belltown district in downtown Seattle. Um, let's see if this link gives us more information pub crawl uh spending 30 minutes at each location which will be enough time to support six local businesses by sampling their fare catching some pokemon and make incredible memories before closing out the night at our final destination um uh they are spending 30 minutes each at six locations from let's see 9 to 10 10 to 11 11 to 12 12 to 1 1 to 2 that's more than time. Interesting. Um, the first one, first location they're going from 9 to 9.30, Trade Wind Tavern, Trade Winds Tavern, uh, from 9.40 to not, or 10.10, Buckley's Pub. I guess you have to factor in travel time, don't you? Um, from 10.20 to 10.50, Screwdriver. Uh, from 11 to 11.30, Black Cat. Uh, from 11.40 to 12.10, Jupiter. Uh, I feel like I've seen this place before. Uh, from 12.20 to 2, uh, Shorties. Um, we encourage everyone to train responsibly and uh, respectfully. That sounds wild. Um, I'm curious to see how many people go, because they could probably pack houses, especially on a Saturday. It's probably already going to be bonkers, so... Um, that does kind of sound like fun. I can't imagine I want to inebriate myself that much. Um, so we'll have to see. It might be a night of six sodas. <laughs> 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 I'd like to, to support the local businesses. Um, but I certainly don't want to get six beers in 
uh, and not wake night. up for the Sunday morning session. That's true. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, we're probably within somewhat walking distance of our hotel. I'll have to check what the um. It's Belltown. The right? route. Yeah, I don't know how far Belltown is. It's um, it's east of where we are. I can give you the address to the final spot if you want to look it up. Sure. Uh, What's the name of the place? Uh, Shorties. Uh, twenty three sixteen Second Avenue. Second Avenue. Yep. Watch it be like uh, one street over. It's opposite of where we're staying. Opposite like, side of. We're up here. Uh -huh. It's down here. Center centers between. Okay. Does it's, it seem like walking distance? Yeah, that's not bad. Okay. All right. So yeah, yeah maybe we'll. Right. Oh yeah, that's totally doable. Holy cow! Okay. Yeah, then I think I think we'll probably do that pup crawl. Um, we m we should figure something out as far as a, another meetup or something. I don't know. I feel Honestly. like we should put a uh, maybe we'll put a tweet out leading or we'll put something out leading up to for like mid Saturday or something. Uh, maybe that that hour in between. Um, I think if anything, we could try to organize a raid train because people will be doing raids. I mean. The only time to do raid trains would be when people aren't uh, doing their GoFest in stuff because we can't. We can't. I don't think we in. can't organize too much more because people. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to organize a raid train. I want to just tell people, hey, we will be here at this time. Come, Come say hi. Out. Come say hi so we can get a group photo or whatever. So that's more of what I want. I think GoFest will be doing that plenty. Because they guess. do photo sessions, they they I have really know, but like we're not a featured pair or anything. So, which I mean, I'm not heartbroken of. We have consistently like 300 listeners of, of our podcast. Like, thank you all. Yeah, I mean, thank you, but it's not trainer tips numbers. It's not lured up numbers. So, um, of course we're not featured. So I just want to be able to say, hey. If you want to come say hi or do trades or something. Steven wants to feel loved. Come say hi to Steven. <sighs> it's not what I want, Jesse. <laughs> Don't put words in my mouth. You muffin. I'm a muffin. <sighs> Parker, I'm, I'm a muffin. I'm not swearing. <laughs> um, I'm not swearing. You're swearing. Um, oh, look, the bird's back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, uh, go away, push notification. You you bother. What's me. next? Uh, that's pretty much it. Unless you want to talk about our. Do you want to talk about Arch Architect Cup? Dup, dup, dup. Uh, the Architect Cup. Do you want to talk about it? Nah. Okay. Yeah. If you're in regionals for self, that's coming up. Based on where you are, you might have already played it, or it's coming up for you, like me, which is this Saturday. Get practice in. That's like the primary thing. It's a very whitelist meta. Unfortunately, it's we're seeing the same six things. It's kind of gross. It's a little rough. Rough. Like a dog. Hi, HR. What's up? Anything else in closing? I don't think so. I think that's pretty much it. Get I mean, hyped for GoFest. Yeah, GoFest is in two weeks. Um, I get to... <sighs> Starly Community Day is Sunday. Friday and Saturday, I am a part of a... Uh, if, if you... If you do any running, you might know of uh, a thing called the Ragnar Relays. Um, if you don't, I will explain it. Ragnar, uh, are there, it happens a couple of different locations throughout the U.S. and I think abroad as well. Um, there are usually around 200-mile relay race. So I'm not running 200 miles myself over the course of two days. I'm a part of a team of, I think, 12-ish. Um, I don't know what our head count is. I'm not paying attention um <laughs> oh no uh out of context test text message i will talk i will tell you about it later it seems very funny okay um i'm a part of a team because they needed people um i don't really know if i would consider myself part of the team i'm more there to fill so that people aren't having to run excessively more um, as much as other people would be like, you're part of the team. And I'm like, I don't know any of you. Long story short. Um, yeah, so I'm running, I think I have three legs, one of which is six miles, two of which I think are like four, four to five miles. 
So over the course of maybe 24 hours, I think is maybe what our legs are going to be. Um, there's two vans. So our team is split evenly and then it rotates between the two vans. I'm in van two. So I'm starting midday ish, probably mid morning, midday of day one on Friday. And then we're probably crossing the finish line mid afternoon, Saturday. Um, so I'm probably going to be dead from the waist down on Sunday. So we will be hanging out Sunday for Starly Community Day as chill as possible. So, And then the week after is GoFest. So fingers crossed work lets me recuperate <laughs> on the <laughs> in-between. Because uh, I work in shipping, which means I get to walk around and push things. And by the way, my shoulder might be tweaked and messed up. So I... This is going to be so much fun. Yay. I hate it. Well, I don't. It's just a jam packed and going to be rough. So I, you know, the phrase, I can't wait. I can wait. I could most certainly wait some more. <laughs> I could wait a lot more. Um, That's my weekend, everybody. I hope your weekends are going to be fun. I hope you take Starly Community Day. Nice and chill because that's about what uh, what you probably should. Um, it's not crazy. It's not crazy. Go ham time, um, unless you absolutely want to. In which case, more power to you. But like, conserve some energy. There's a lot of stuff coming up. We're midsummer. People can go on vacations and all of this other fun stuff. You know, take a deep breath. Um, um, goodness gracious, brains starting to fall apart um again if you wanted to follow us over on twitter at battle underscore science um if you wanted to excuse me join our discord talk with us uh more personally you can go over to our discord uh links are in the description of every format you may be watching and or listening uh or listening and or watching to this in um youtube description podcast description Twitch should be below somehow on Twitch. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, you can back us financially, which we actually super, uh, super appreciate, especially um, because we host a podcast. Podcasts aren't free um, because it was our third anniversary. Um, the sub yearly subscription uh, came out and Patreon is able to cover uh, those of you that back us on Patreon is able to cover that entirely, that yearly subscription cost. So, um, battle science f besides the tech cost and probably the monetary cost because I don't really want to do the math as far as what an hourly cost hourly wage the battle science podcast more or less pays for itself so um, that I greatly appreciate um, but you those of you that back us on patreon are able to basically directly support us um, and what we do um Patreon.com slash Battle Science if you want to join that. Listen to the Battle Science After Dark podcast. I'm toying with the idea that next week's Battle Science After Dark podcast will be available to the public. Um, just so more people can listen and have something as they're commuting to and from GoFest. Um, so we'll see. Uh, working on topics for that. Uh, I might put out a tweet when we record that on next Tuesday. Um, as far as what we're talking about, if it's public uh, or if it's not, if it is public, it is still on our Patreon. It's just available for everyone to listen to. Um, so a um, couple things before you go straight into closing here. If you are going out to Seattle this weekend for GoFest, bring a water bottle. Make sure your devices are charged. Bring a portable battery. Bring um, sunscreen. If it's going to be sunny. Honestly, an umbrella is not a bad idea to help cut the direct sunlight. Um, as Jesse can attest to, phones can overheat and close all of your apps. And which not want to work. Which means you can't play Pokemon Go if your phone is overheated. Yeah. Um, you could go through the absolute jank uh, method and water cool your phones. I don't recommend that, though that would be cool. Um, and it's never this hot in seattle like this is un i mean normal now well, this is normal this time now of this year. is normal but previously it's usually as we were joking before overcast and rainy 
So, but just prepare yourself to be outside for long periods of time. It's okay to take breaks. Don't get overwhelmed by everything that's going on in GoFest. Pace yourself, I think, is the biggest tip. And I think the overall spawns aren't the right spawns for you to go absolutely ham for. As far as the featured spawns, like, none of this is super rare. Um, None of it's going to go away. It's all going to come back. At some point. So, realistically, take a deep breath. If you miss something, you miss something, it'll come back. What I've told my locals, this event is 80% socializing, 20% content. Yep. And from the little bits of Twitter I was checking after Berlin, it's exactly what it was. It was a lot of, we had a lot of fun meeting people, made some really cool trades, um, hung out Oh, a create lot. a trade list. If you're going to do trades, create a trade list. Yeah. Some people, like in the local Seattle group, have a they have those nice uh trade like I'm looking for and mm-hmm. I have like grid boxes. That person one of the people in the saddle group got it as a shirt. Nice. Um the one thing I'm looking for. And actually realistically anything that has XL, so if you have extra lick a tongue or chancy, uh actually no, because you'll be I getting don't. base friendship. I'll be getting base you friendship. You should go for Tapafinis. No. No. No, because depending on how many people you're trading with, you only get, what, five special trades? A day. A day, which, I mean, is some, but not a ton. That's also a ton of Stardust. So I guess the question is, what are you looking for that's not special? What I'm looking for that's not special, that I don't care because I won't be getting XL candy for, because you only get XL candy for things you trade out. G-Zig wouldn't be a bad one. If you have uh, Vulpix from Distance... Mm. If you have Vulpix from interesting locations, I would love to tr- to take because I don't have rank one for GBL. I don't have the Nundo, which is not possible unless it's the very first trade we do as friends. And I don't certainly don't have the Hundo. So if you have Vulpix, Cantonian Vulpix specifically, I'm more than willing to trade. I don't want the shiny. I want to be able to catch the shiny myself. So if you have Canto Vulpix and you're looking to trade with me, star a canto vulpix for me so i will find something that i have to trade you i'll have to figure it out i've got a lot of box management to do don't we a all a lot of box management to do don't so, we all um i can't guarantee i'll have something that you're super desiring to trade so um but if you have a Vulpix, do you have? If you have a spare Vulpix, I would be more than happy to trade. So. I don't have a list. Just ask me for something. You monster. <laughs> <laughs> um, Snorlax, right? I don't need any more. Munchlax. I don't need. Em. Actually, I could use a good Munchlax. Though I it's though it's use th- its usability has dropped. Its its uh popularity has dropped significantly. I guess G Fisk. If anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Because that is a monster and a half to try and re-roll the right stats. Because if it re-rolls the wrong stats by like one point, it turns out to a, like a 1470. 1470 and a 1501. Yeah, I'm running a 1488 is my best. The birds are back. <laughs> the birds are back. Birdemic <laughs> part five. Duh. Oh my goodness. By birds, I mean middle fingers. It's an audio podcast without video. We don't have cameras on because this room's a mess. Yes. If you ever wondered why we don't do video, it's because this room is a pit. We tried once. Did we? Over the white screen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For one of the tournaments, it kind of worked. No, did we? We didn't even use that, did we? No. <laughs> uh, uh, goodness gracious. Um, we hope to see you all out there. Yep. If you're not coming out. Have a good weekend. Yep. If we don't see you now, um, I think when next season's play Pokemon, we will try to... to Get to one of those I, tournaments. My goal is to go to two. Now, if Worlds is happening here in the U.S., one of those two is going to be Worlds. So I will most certainly see a bunch of people. Um, I know we're smaller. I, I, I don't have plans as far as what we're doing going forward. I guess, you know, maybe we'll see what, as far as news comes out, next 
pod uh, between now and the next podcast, just because this is a very lighter, very more tinfoil hat, tinfoil hatty uh, episode. We I'm still wrap my tinfoil hat and go use to cook a pizza. Huh. Um, I, you could just put it on top of a thing of popcorn, pops of popcorn. Ooh. Um, you know, we took an episode where there was no content and turned it into two hours and 20 minutes. And I don't know if anyone actually cares about that or if that drives people away. I have no idea. Um, but depending on how much information is happening, what? Did you want to read that email off air or on air? Oh, I completely totally space. Thank you for the reminder. Uh, Peaky Nerd sent us an email. <gasps> Yay. Um, uh, I don't know if they want me to. I'm not going to read it verbatim because I don't. They didn't say that they wanted me to read it out loud or anything. Okay. Uh, but Pika Nerd, one of our listeners and on our Discord, as well as one of the buddies in Pokemon Go, um, uh, sent us an email to like anyone else can, um, battlescience dot podcast at gmail dot com. Um, and let us know about some of their Dino Community Day adventures. Um, um, basically showcasing some of the, the, you know, it's Pokemon Go. You can play it anywhere, which is kind of wild. Um, I mean, these days with gaming technology, if you have like a Steam Deck, you can play just about any game on the go. But like yeah. Pokemon Go is as a GPS driven game you can play it anywhere um so in the case of Dino you know, community day they they were um Pika nerd was out and about doing some traveling was able to participate for a small uh small portion of it still get the shiny um get a lucky trade out of it and you know had a good time with with their friends so good um you know that's kind of what pokemon goes about so that's you know it's pretty sweet it's the end of a two hour, two hour and twenty minute episodes. I'm sorry, I'm not like bursting in the seams with energy, Pika nerd. Um, we appreciate the email, though. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we the the handful of emails we've gotten is have always been really cool. So, um, feel free to send us more if you want. Maybe to. we do a new segment, mailbag. Mailbag. But we don't get enough things in the mailbag. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can make a bummer for it for when we do get emails. If you do want to email us, um, I've looked at what a PO box PO box costs more money than it. Then it's worth. Makes any sense. And I am yeah. not sharing my public address. <laughs> I know we're small enough, so we won't get like hate mail or swatted or anything. But I like, mean, I could, we could give them my work email. We have a post box there. Yeah. Did I, I see email? I meant yeah. mail. I don't know if I would want to, I don't know if I would feel comfortable doing that for your <laughs> job. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I. It'll be something we think about. Very briefly, I just don't think I would want to do that. Uh, it would be cool, but I don't think we have the the engagement for it. So um, the email is fine. The e- email is there; it's free, and it's not going to cease to exist unless. I actually don't even know if you can delete an email. Can you cancel an email? Yes. Okay. I've never never. It's just my like mind. a Windows Seven prompt, though. Are you want to delete this? Are you sure by clicking that you want to delete this? You want to delete this? Mm. Um. But anywho. We're excited to see you out there. Yep. We're excited to get out and go hang out with people. Mm-hmm. If you aren't going to make it, we'll we'll be there with you in spirit. Mm-hmm. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you for tuning in. And we'll catch you out there on the battlefield. Bye.